Some of you may remember a guy named Guy. His name was Guy Kawasaki. And for those of you old enough to remember the original Macintosh, the Mac 512K as we called it, that was back in the days when we measured memory in Ks instead of Gs. Um, there were signatures of 27 people inside the case of the original Macintosh. They were the members of the original development team. And Guy Kawasaki was the original VP of marketing for the Macintosh. And he became fairly famous because you might say, did a pretty good job. Well, Guy wrote a book in the mid-80s, a couple of years after the Mac was introduced, on how to market a high-tech product. It was really simple. First, you come up with the name. Well, in a burst of marketing brilliance, we've come up with a name, the Eclipse 400. <laughs> Two, get a logo. Well, we got a logo. And then three, you make the T-shirt. We don't do t-shirts anymore, we do polo shirts now. So I'm excited and happy to announce today that yes, the ECJ is now the Eclipse 400 and we are committed to producing the Eclipse 400. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. I think the really important part here, the one that's, that's really exciting, is this, an hourly fuel burn at max cruise thrust at 350 of 45 and a half gallons per hour, 305 pounds per hour. Now, I think anybody who's been watching the news at all understands we're in a new era of fuel costs. I was sort of got a kick out of the CNBC guys this morning because they were so excited that fuel was down from $135 a barrel to $127 a barrel. You know what? We're not going to ever see $60 a barrel oil again, or $70, or probably $90. And that means the cost of fuel is only going to skyrocket. The average cost that I have paid in the last three weeks for fuel, from Teterboro to Burbank, is over $7 a gallon. An economy is going to become a byword in aviation, fuel economy, just like it is with Ford Motor Company, General Motors, Toyota, et cetera, et cetera. Four seats, 4,700 pounds, 2,940 empty weight. We think there's a revolution in single engine going on. In fact, if you look at these numbers, and these are just gamma numbers from 1985 to 2007, in the turboprop segment, and there's a really interesting phenomena, single engine sales, versus multi-engine sales and turboprops are virtually identical. Historically, if you look at piston engine sales going back into the 60s and 70s and early 80s, this ratio is about three to one. We think aircraft like the Cessna Caravan, the Pilatus PC-12, the Piper Meridian, the Cicada 750 have taught people that the reliability of turbine engines first with turboprops, and now we think with turbofan, is great enough that the safety of twin engines are no longer absolutely required. Some people will, will choose that, but we think that increasingly we're going to see a major shift in this ratio, which is we're going to see more and more and more single engine aircraft, particularly turbofan aircraft. So when they become turbinized, single engine models become very, very attractive due to their high performance and much lower operating acquisition costs. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own and easy to operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, 
The jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. As you know, one of our objectives in designing the ECJ and now the Eclipse 400 was commonality. Commonality that can drive costs down of our supply chain, commonality that can drive risk out of a development program, commonality that can drive time out of a development program. So there's a lot of commonality. We started with the 500. First thing we did is we lopped off the engines and the entire aft section, the tip tanks, the fuselage, the pressure vessel, turned that into a four place, added a new aft section with a V-tail and an engine on top. What's that produce? An aircraft with minimally 60% commonality because things like all the landing gear, the flaps, the actuators, Avio, all the systems in the airplane stay exactly the same. So this has always been an objective in aviation and it's always difficult to achieve. And it's difficult to achieve for two reasons. One, generally speaking, aircraft don't scale down. They scale up all the time. DC-8, Super 60, you know, 747-400, the list goes on and on. Scaling down an airplane is really tough. And it's tough for a second reason which is any good red-blooded engineer can't leave well enough alone. They're always going to want to change. And so this becomes an overall objective, a design criteria of the 400, is maintain that commonality.